And the Artist in Residence program is designed to provide a single artist or several artists a more extended period of time to present their work in such a way that reflects how Mayor Baba's life and message has touched them. That certainly has happened this week. Um, the center is a place where there is a lot of arts, uh, as you know. Um, but this was a way of giving uh, one person or a couple of people an extended period of time to really share about Mayor Baba. <clears throat> Bob is a singer, a cellist, a composer who writes for concert stage, dance, theater, film. He's got a couple of film credits and he has eight CDs. He's also uh, been a music educator and has taught all over the world and is currently on the faculty of UCLA. So, um, but most of all, we feel grateful just to be together tonight with Mayor Baba. So welcome, Bob. <laughs> Center. What a wonderful opportunity. Uh, thank you, Buzz. Thank you, Dennis, the whole production crew, everyone who makes this place so incredible. Uh, you know, we just waltz in and, you know, everything is here, a cabin, and, you know, we're just taken care of. So, I, again, just thank you and thank you, Bob. Um, this piece I performed, this is called Bela. And it was in, it's, um, all, all, everything I do is my own compositions at this point, mostly. Um, and this one is called Bela inspired by the music of Bela Bartok. And he wrote in a lot of different meters, and so that's one of the um, um, qualities of that piece. And I performed it, had the opportunity to uh, perform in Mondley Hall um, a number of years ago, and I played that piece. And Meru was in the audience, and she piped up right away and said, that piece will wake up the beyond young God. <laughs> <laughs> here, here. That was, that was a good confirmation, um, and it was, it was. She, you know, she just spoke it right out um, in the hall. It was very, you know. So it, those memories like that are just, you know, wonderful. And I've had the opportunity to, uh, you know, travel to uh, India several times and take my cello along with me. And so I've written a number of pieces there. And as I say, every song, every piece I write has a story. And there's some kind of, you know, evolution and a story behind it. Um, um, I'm going to do, I also want to just before share, I, I will do a Rumi piece next. And um, just another quote from Rumi. He says, the lovers of God are so outrageous. They climb up on the scale opposite eternity and claim to balance it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh... 
starts a fire. <laughs> what? <laughs> when it rains, it starts a fire. And what, can he, what does he mean? And so then he went on to explain. Baba says when it rains, it starts a fire. So the rain means the tears of compassion. When they fall, they begin a fire of service, of wanting to do something in the world. So that's the fire that burns in the heart to do something. The rain comes, the tears fall when you see the need, and the fire is the urge to do something. Mm -hmm. This is the sea of fire. Rain is falling and it's starting to 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 fire. Soak up all that rain till you drown. Soak up all that rain till you drown. Soak up all that rain till you drown. In a sea of fire. Rain is falling and it's starting to fire. Rain is falling and it's starting to fire. Soak up all that rain till you drown. Soak up all that rain till you drown. Soak up all that rain till you drown. In a sea of fire.
Rain's falling and it's starting to fire. Rain is falling and it's starting to fire. Rain is falling and it's starting to fire. Soak up all that rain till you drown. Soak up all that rain till you drown. Soak up all that rain till you drown. Drum, drum. In a sea of fire, Karen and I have two girls, and we would 
And um, our friend Dan and his daughter Zoe visited us one time, and I remember using this song, I'm brushing my hair in the morning, singing to my girls. So it has many, many, you know, permutations. Um, so. Baba is wonderful that way, you know, he provides. Just when you think it's not going to work out or it's not happening, he gives you the answer. Um, there's a piece, well, I won't explain it, I'll just do it. Um, I'm typing, I'm writing, I'm phoning, I'm texting, I'm booting, I'm saving, I'm surfing, I'm sending, I'm posting, I'm tagging, I'm following, I'm liking, I'm streaming, I'm watching, I'm pinching, I'm craving, I'm filing, I'm tracking, I'm purging, I'm punching, I'm sorting, I'm logging, I'm listing, I'm printing, I'm washing, I'm rinsing, I'm drying, I'm stacking, I'm sweeping, I'm weeping. Wiping, I'm bleaching, I'm grinding, I'm fixing, I'm mixing, I'm prepping, I'm eating, I'm sitting, I'm thinking, I'm dreaming, I'm wishing, I'm... But am I loving you? But am I loving you? I'm looking, I'm working, I'm checking, I'm parking, I'm shopping, I'm pricing, I'm buying, I'm charging, I'm walking, Driving, I'm working, I'm flying, I'm starting, I'm stopping, I'm raging, I'm speeding, I'm calling, I'm talking, I'm posting, I'm booking, I'm stamping, I'm posting, I'm packing, I'm mailing, I'm pitching, I'm kicking, I'm bitching, I'm screaming, I'm steaming, I'm pouring, I'm cooling, I'm drinking, I'm lifting, I'm pouring, I'm swinging, I'm dancing, I'm sitting, I'm thinking, I'm dreaming, I'm wishing, I'm... But am I loving you? But am I loving you? Because your love sets me free. And your love rains on me. And your love shines on me. Don't you know that your love sets me free? Your love makes me speechless. No, 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 no. Your love makes do everything and as you're doing those things remember me so that's I'm gonna do a suite of pieces now um, we'll do let's see four in a, in a row here just as a suite without interruption and um, this is my suite for Erico Nadell and um, I think many of you of course knew Erico from yeah. Um, times in India, and um, uh, I happened to be in India around the time, and then I was at his when he passed away, um, and his cremation. I was at um, so these are, uh, and I have a suite of six, five pieces, 
And I'll do three of them from there. And first is a poem that I wrote after that time. So we'll just think of Erico. And uh, so it's this poem. And then um, Eternal Kiss, Lamentation, Be With God, and The Urgency. So at the cremation of Erico, I saw followers of Meher Baba. I saw Hindus, Sikhs, Muslims, Christians, Jews, Zoroastrians. I saw Westerners. I saw Easterners. Villagers, pilgrims, residents, strangers, workers, Americans, Europeans, Australians, Indians. I saw shiny black water buffalo, stray dogs, goats, and cattle. I saw rocks. I saw crows gathered in the trees, crying. I saw a blind man and a cripple and an old crone. I saw colorful, sari-clad women, men in white Gandhi caps. I saw people in cars, on bicycles, on foot, in rickshaws, on motorcycles, converge around a stretcher heaped with flowers. I saw pushing and shoving and crowding. I saw embraces. I saw cow dung and wood that smelled of kerosene. I saw red plastic chairs around a funeral pyre. I saw clouds. I saw wood heaped up over a body wrapped in a printed fabric, piled high and topped with ghee and fragrance. I saw garlands. I saw torches of fire lighting the pyre. I saw wind-blown smoke. I saw cameras and cell phones, sun hats, sunglasses. I saw the fire gain intensity, flames rising. I saw Erico smiling, arms behind his head disappearing. Oh, oh, oh. 
I was here, let's see, I was just looking at back at my calendar, 2019, just before things got crazy. Um, and I'd been performing in Atlanta, and I had my gongs with me, and I was en route uh, back to New York. Uh, and I had my car, so it's easier to travel with five gongs and a cello um, with a car. And um, these I accumulated, I played some of these, uh, one of these on, um, in the library on Wednesday night. So um, I've always been fascinated with the sound of the gongs, and I uh, wanted to... Um, so on my travels uh, and touring, I was in Taipei and Hong Kong on various occasions, Japan. But these all came from Hong Kong or Taipei. Um, and so I accumulated these, you know, kind of each at a, a music store as I went along my way. And so I ended up with five of these gongs. And when I was here, in 2019, it was five years ago, almost exactly. Um, I had these with me, and I, I composed this piece while I was here at the center. So I thought it'd be very fitting to return five years later and share this with you. Um, and it's called Sound the Alarm. <laughs> um, and as I mentioned the other day, on my route to Baba, I had studied um, Tibetan Buddhism and Buddhism in general. So uh, sometimes, you know, often these gongs are used in meditation uh, to signal in the beginning and the end of a meditation period. And so the timekeeper, and sometimes I could be the timekeeper, gets to initiate and end. So you might hit it once, or maybe twice. Uh, but I always, as I said the other night, I wanted to play more. <laughs> I wanted to play them multiple times, so I, that's one of the reasons I accumulated these and have been working, composing a few pieces using them. Um, you know, the sound is, is very um, primal, we could say. Bells in general have this kind of primal quality, and one reason is that the cello and the piano, for instance, are tempered. And that's a whole discussion, but that was an evolution in Western Europe where you got the tempered scale. And that's why you have Bach writing the well-tempered clavier. And so, and the piano can play in all different keys. So that's part of the tempering process. But when you have just tuning, as they call it, it's, it's pre that, and it's bells all around the world. And we can think of gamelan, um, and you know, church bells all around the world, uh, temple bells in um, you know, Asia, um, all are representative of just tuning, which means they're not tempered, they're not in a certain key, and you can't change keys, they are what they are, and they evoke lots of overtones. We were talking about this in my voice class today. So, anyway, that's part of the in my interest in them, and that's part of the, I think, um, the, the way bells have a sense that they can come right into our hearts. We hear uh, church bells or whatever. It has a way of, um, to me anyway. So this is called Sound the Alarm.
Uh, this next piece is called The Dance of Life, and it's inspired by um, a painting by Edvard Munch, which many of you, I'm sure, have seen. It's a scene of uh, people dancing near a lake or a fjord in Norway, and it's um, uh, in the summer, so the midnight, midnight sun is kind of glowing uh, in the sky, a la Edvard Munch. And as I thought of that picture, painting, I swear I saw Baba standing next to one of those trees, just like he is in that famous picture. He's right down here at the bottom of the steps, and he's got his hand on his hip, and he's leaning with his hand out on the tree, right? We all know that image. And I swear, he's part of that scene in my mind. Um, and so this is the dance of life. And it's also inspired, so Edvard Munch is a Norwegian painter. I have Norwegian heritage, and I've traveled a good bit in Norway and toured there um, and listened to a lot of the uh, folk music, which is very, very interesting. And they have indigenous instruments, particularly the Hargan or fiddle is one that has sympathetic strings, um, like a sitar, actually, and, or like a bagpipe. It has the effect of a bagpipe because you have these... Uh, resonating strings that don't get played, that are under here, under the bridge, but they just resonate in sympathy with the pitches you're playing. So this is um, also inspired by uh, my love and my heritage of uh, Norwegian music. And one of my uh, also inspirations often is heritage. Who came before you? And I think sometimes I, when I'm here, I'm thinking, boy, are we, how thankful are we for those who came before us? all the effort they put into it, all the vision that they had, all the sweat equity that they put into this. So I think often, um, and I teach this too with my students, we work with ancestral ideas and projects and what would be the songs of your ancestors, etc. So this is also has that inspiration. <laughs>
Thank you. That's, that's one to get up and dance to. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, in, interestingly enough, I, I write a lot for dance and theater, um, and I was a dancer, actor in different forms earlier on, and so I feel like the music I do is very much, I wouldn't do this kind of music unless I had that experience in dance and theater, um, so that is informed, and uh, what in sports for that matter. I did a lot of that, and so that you know, kinetic quality I love putting into music. Interesting thing about the Norwegian music, Norwegian folk music particularly, as I traveled around Norway listening to it, it's all connected with dance. It's all in, in, with dance. It's, you know, it's for dance, it's with dance, it's one in the same, kind of. So it brings us back to that tradition of music and dance, how they were right together. That in traditionally, um, music and dance were right together. They were the same people in a lot of cases doing it. They would be the singers and the dancers. Um, we can see this in a lot of different cultures even today. And historically, they were right in the same world. Um, you know, uh, Buzz mentioned I teach at UCLA and I've taught at many different universities. And the odd thing there is if the dance department is over here, the music department is way over there. And I teach a collaboration class where choreographers and composers come together to collaborate, which you would think would be the most natural thing. Well, the composers have never come to the dance building before, and the dancers have never been to the music building. So it's an interesting thing that how separated we have become, you know, kind of compartmentalized. Um, but, you know, anyway, I, I'm very much of a fan of integrating all these things and the way they play off each other. So that's um, a little backstory on that. Um, I played, I told a little bit of story in this one. This is the, the, the twins, Rustam and Sora, Irani, who are the twins, uh, the nephews of Faba. And I met them, and I, I'm sure you all have met them, or you know, if you do, if you haven't, and a few newcomers, maybe I, I look forward to the day when you get to meet them and be entertained by them because they're wonderfully entertaining fellows and um, you know, personalities. Um, and early on in their lives, and they were 13, say, and uh, 12, 13, Baba instructed them in certain prayers that they were to recite each day uh, for him. And one of them was repeat my name 101 times. Uh, and so they were doing that, and that was part of their practice. And then one day, Baba called them and for an audience, and he said, "You know, show me how you're praying and how you're doing the prayers." And so they went, they looked at each other, and they went, and they tell this story. Baba, 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 like an orchestra conductor, Baba conducts him. Do it like this. Baba. 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 So that was my inspiration for this next piece. So I wanted to respond to that. And I also was curious about when they're you know, repeating his name 101 times, how do you keep track <laughs> of the numbers? So I wanted to write a piece of music that had built in was 101 re repetitions of Baba. So when you did the song, when you did the form, then you knew you had uh, completed the number, so you didn't have to count. So this is Baba 101 times. <laughs> Baba, 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 
idea that um, this forlorn fellow who has has blood on his hands let's say he's he's very feels guilty he feels shame he feels like it's impossible to be forgiven and he's gone on the run from this incident and maybe at times we all feel that way and I know I felt that way in my life and so I started from the end, and this guy, is, after traveling and traveling and traveling and traveling, and years, years, decades, let's say, he comes along, he gets to India, and he's stumbling along, and he's along that road in the 30s, and Baba has just begun doing the duni, And he comes upon the duni that's right there on that road out of um, Ahmed Nagar, right? And, and Baba, he sees the disciples there, and Baba, and he kind of stands at a distance, and they see him, and they beckon him over. It's like... You know, welcome. Where have you been? We've been expecting you. Like that. Welcome. Welcome. And so this piece is inspired by that moment. He arrives and he has this moment. He sees Baba and, you know, it, it changes his life. So, one more. This is In You I See. I feel all 
in your call. There are no distractions. You're invited to come and sing with us, and tomorrow night we'll be uh, performing again here, um, and the chorus will join me in some songs, and uh, Cliff Hackford will be here as well, so we'll have uh, a joyous time. Um, and I just asked, on the spur of the moment, and I don't know how he finds time to play the guitar as well as everything else, but he's agreed to join me, and this piece is called The Reassurance Waltz. And um, uh, the words are, I am with you always, I am with you always, when you work, when you play, when you think I've gone away, I am there, I am with you. I am here, I am there, I am everywhere, I am with you now. All right? So, I'll, I'll sing it a few times and then you're going to come in and join me.
with you. I am here, I am there, I am everywhere, I am with you now. Here we go, we're gonna go around and join me. I am with you. When you work, when you play, when you think I've gone away, when you think I've gone away, I'm there, I'm there, I'm with you, I'm with you, I'm here, I'm there, I'm everywhere, I am here, I'm there, I'm everywhere, I'm with you now, I'm with you now. Many of you are familiar with that Hirallel used to um, be a night watchman on the hill. 
and um, uh, in Maribad, up on the hill, and um, but he would come to the rail and be one of the first to sing after Archie. He would be one, of the, and he would do a call and response, singing Baba's name. And so you know, I love that. I know other other people do it. But this is my version of it, inspired by Hirolel. Just a short story about Hirolel. Um, this is during uh, Baba's visit in Naranga during the tour of Hamapur in 1954. This is from Glimpses of the Godman by Balna 2, Volume uh, 5. So Baba also visited the home of Hirolel, who had great love for him. So here he is in Baba, you know, Baba is in his home. Although a special place had been made for Baba to sit, Baba sat on the floor like one of the family. With a beaming smile, Baba expressed his happiness to be in Hirolel's house and asked him if there was anything he wanted. Quote, ask me anything and I will give it to you. He gestured. Can you imagine? <laughs> Baba being there, right in front of you, saying, anything you want, ask for it. I will. <laughs> After a moment's hesitation, Hirolel replied, Baba, I don't know what to ask for. My mind is all confused. <laughs> oh, I, I, don't, I can't blame him at all. That seems very human. I, I don't know. I, my mind is all confused. Baba then, on his own, lovingly guided Hirolo. Quote, say, Baba, although I might forget you, may you never forget me. Hirolel then repeated this request. When he finished, Baba made his graceful gesture given. Perhaps this is an indirect but meaningful indication as to what we should ask Baba. Although I may forget you, may you never forget. <laughs> Sing along, it'll be call and response, and I will sing the call, and you all respond.
Avatar, 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 Avatar,